We need a Samada sensory vote potential monitor on hand. There's something that you should know. Don't Mr. talk to me about my father doing the surgery. The decision has been made. I'm the one operating on Mrs. Dixon. Patrick, don't attempt this operation. Look, I know why you want me off the case. You're afraid I'll lose the patient, just like you lost mom. Look, forget about your mother. Think about yourself. You're a brilliant surgeon. You've got a great career ahead. Which is why I'm performing the surgery. If I'm successful, I'll be elevated to the top tier of surgeons. But if you attempt it and fail, it could be a big mark on your career. Family, but thank you for the concern. Look, Mrs. Dixon's condition is inoperable. No amount of gamma knife dissection or coil amortization can save her. Of course, unless you were cutting. Okay, well, well that's, that's right. Her condition is the same as your mother's, but trying to save Mrs. Dixon won't bring your mother back. All right, I'm leaving you two alone. No, stay. I want you to hear this. I don't blame you for mom's death. I never did. She was terminal. There was one in 1,000 chance that you or any other surgeon could have saved her. But when the operation failed and she died, you were too self-absorbed to find me and tell me. Mom was gone and I heard from an assistant surgeon. You were only worried about your own grief. So you went on a drinking bin that lasted for years until your liver failed. And that is what I blame you for. The way you threw away your life. So what, you wanna follow in my footsteps? Mrs. Dixon may very well die. I think I can save her. But I'm also humble enough to know that I could be mistaken. So why attempt it in the first place? Because if I don't, she'll die for certain. And I don't want that on my conscience. I might start to spiral down just like you. Oh, this bench. Dr. Scorpio, I don't believe you've met my son, William. Nice to meet you. You too. Hello. So you're keeping your mom company today? Yeah. I brought my homework so I could stay all day. Oh, that's great. I'm sure she's glad that you're here. I don't know what I'd do without him. Mrs. Dixon, your condition is deteriorating faster than we expected. I'd like to perform surgery this afternoon. That's a lot sooner than we talked about. But maybe that's good. It's going to be okay, Mom. This will make you all better. Right, Dr. Drake? Pogo time maneuver was my idea. I get to carry the gun. I thought you were uncomfortable with firearms. Oh, that was a long, long time ago. Circumstances have required me to cultivate the art of self-defense. I'm actually quite a good shot now. Even if you do say so yourself. No, let's face it. I'm the marksman here. Oh, you take pot shots at anything that moves. No, it's safer for me to have the gun. Oh, okay. I think you're all forgetting that I am the only trained professional in the group, so I will take the gun. Absolutely no way! Not. Oh, all right. We'll, we, we'll ask uh, the, the Tessio here. He's an impartial sort of a bloke. Tess. Now, who do you think should carry the gun? Hmm? Wise choice. Oh, you're just trying to get your head back on her chest. And he's halfway there. Thank you. Oh, come on, oh, let's get her out of here. She's you're trying to get a date wherever she goes. Oh, that's that's disgusting. disgusting. Huh? Regards to your family, Tess. Do I look as nervous as I feel? No, please. You're super nervous. If you hadn't gone into medicine, you could have been a fighter pilot. This is where the doctors justify the grief they give us. Dr. Drake is trying to save a life, so don't expect him to be nice about it. Patrick's people skills, such as they are, deteriorate even further in OR. He's all about himself and his scary brilliance. So if you can't keep up, head for the nearest exit. That's reassuring. You'll be fine. I'm worried about you. You may be smart, but you're not nearly arrogant enough to be a doctor. Drake the Younger, on the other hand, has attitude to spare. He wants it all just the way he wants it. And he's good enough to make it worth the effort. Or so we tell ourselves. Hold the music. I'm in a room full of ladies. It's all the inspiration I need. 
Okay, people, stay sharp. This is gonna get tricky. I only want to say things once. I'm about to embolize an aneurysm stem. See there? The aneurysm has a huge venous component. Give me some pressure. There. Okay. This is too big and fragile to coil embolize. Gonna have to ligate it at the base. With no blood, you significantly shrink it, which depressurizes the vessel walls. Nice work, Dr. Dre. We're still at risk for post-op vasospasm, but at least that we can take care of. The EEG is flattening. Come on, just hold on. Increase the FiO2 to 90%, hyperventilate the patient. We have to reduce intracranial pressure. Give me some mannitol, we need to osmotically diurese her. She's gone. You have to call it. Shut off the machines and unhook the body from the patches and leads while I wrap Dr. Drake's point of entry. Quartermain? Help Nurse Spencer bag the instruments. The size of the abnormality along with the intracranial edema made it impossible from the start. I'll go tell her so. No. I'll do it. English. That was the most pathetic wolf call I've ever heard. Worked, didn't it? Forget beer. I want tequila. Shots, please. How did surgery go? I'm sorry, there were complications. Your mother died. We did our best to save her, but there was nothing more we could do. Where's my dad? I don't know. I thought he'd come to tell you himself. He walked out of OR and he didn't tell us where he was going. Is she all better now? I'm sorry, William. There were complications, and your mother died. We tried to save her, but we couldn't. 